San Diego, and the Rockies are in town, and Jed Jerko enjoys hitting against the Colorado pitchers. Three home runs this year and a 346 average. And how about the bull for the Colorado Rockies? Willene Rosario. He's been a beast for Padre pitchers. Four of his 18 home runs against San Diego Hurlers this year. Friday night, beer fest night here at the park at Petco Park in downtown San Diego. And uh, the Padres hope to improve their record against the Colorado Rockies, a team that has been toughest on them of any in the National League West, although they're only separated by three games in the National League West standings. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Grant and Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn, Dick Kenberg. We're pleased to have joined us on this Friday night. and. Uh, these uh, Rockies, they are 5 and 1 here at Petco and 12 and 4 overall. The Padres need to get something going. They're going to go to a rookie right hander. Yeah, it all starts with pitching. And the one thing that Burt Smith has going for him tonight is familiarity at the big league level. We know about his debut in Tampa. He got knocked around one plus inning, but now he's familiar. The fourth stint for the 23 year old. If he can utilize his fastball, throw it with good location, he's going to be around 93, 94. He could top out about 96. But the one thing that's important about Bird Smith, improvement. After he went down to the minor leagues in Tucson particularly, he had great numbers. Five and one with an ERA just over three. And I'll tell you what, guys, you guys know this. Pitching in the PCL, three ERA is pretty darn good. So yeah. hopefully that translates tonight. Tony really enjoyed your interview with Todd Hilton. Thank it was you. obvious he has such great admiration. He got a little emotional. <laughs> and we're going to let you talk about another Rocky that knows how to hit Troy Tolowitzki. Yeah, and, you know, he's... He's kind of taken that marker from, from Todd Helton and has started to incorporate the things that Todd does. And, you know, Tulowitzki's been hurt an awful lot in his, in his young career, but if you look at the numbers, you know, first in average, first in slugging, first in RBI, you can see the ability is there. And whenever he has that year where he's healthy, I mean, you're talking about a guy who can hit 350 and hit 40 home runs. I believe he's that good. And he's just skimming the surface as how good a player he could be. But again, health is a big factor right. with him. Well, he's been playing with a fractured rib. He was out almost a month and still posting those incredible numbers, Troy Tulowitzki. Well, the big question tonight, can Burt Smith win his first major league game? Well, Bud Black has examined the improvement in this right-hander from the University of Oklahoma. We'll get his comments when we return.
second set against the Rockies and sending 23-year-old Birch Smith to the mound. So Padres fans, you'll get another chance to take a look at him as he makes his fourth career start for the team. And he said the first few outings, of course, pretty rough. So he went back to AAA, worked on a few things, made some adjustments that he's hoping carries over tonight. And Buddy Black says, hey, this guy is 5-1 and one in his 12 starts with Tucson. That's the kind of talent we see in this young righty. You know, Birch has thrown really well uh, his last three starts in the minor leagues uh, with, with Tucson. Uh, so he's coming off, you know, some starts where, you know, the strikeouts were up, the walks were down, uh, limited the hits, uh, pitched really well. Uh, you know, the AAA staff was really impressed by how he threw. So let's, let's hope that he carries that over in a major league game. That is our Geico quote of the game. So Birch Smith looking for his first major league victory tonight, and he will have his hands full with the Rockies, of course. But the Padres looking for revenge tonight against Colorado. First pitch right after the break, it'll be Dick Enberg, Mark Grant, and Tony Gwynn with a call in the booth. So we're set to go. The first of a three game weekend series. The final suds being poured out there at Beer Fest. Uh, hundreds, uh, maybe into the thousands, uh, taking advantage of a Friday night respite here at the ballpark and uh, enjoying some of the local brews as we check the Rockies lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Walt Weiss's crew will bat in this order. Dexter Fowler leads it off. DJ LeMayhew needs to buy a consonant. Troy Tulowitzki will bat third. Michael Kadire leads the National League with a 331 batting average. Willian Rosario, the bull like catcher and long ball hitter, will bat fifth. Then the incredible Todd Helton on his way to the Hall of Fame, perhaps. Josh Rutledge hits seventh at second base. Charlie Blackman in left field. Uh, Cargo Gonzalez still bothered by that injured finger. And Juan Acasio on the mound. And the scouting report for 23-year-old Birch Smith, fastball dominant. We mentioned that earlier. He likes to throw that. The changeup and the curveball to go along with it. And he's been working on a slider. Pitching coach Darren Balsley told me before the game, you might see a few, but I think if he can incorporate that slider along with the mid-90s fastball, a show-me curveball, which is getting better, 
Should have good stuff for Bert Smith tonight. Pitched one year with the Sooners at the University of Oklahoma, then signed with the Padres just three years ago. Drafted in the 14th round. Here's the Padres defense, brought to you by the Aramco Group, Denorfia in left, Amarista Patrol Center, and Venable in right. Headley, Sedeno on the left side, Jerko and Blanks at second and first, with Nick Hundley behind the plate for Birch Smith. Unusual first name, it's his mother's maiden name. Mother, a First grade teacher, Marty. Walt Weiss, his Rockies uh, 66 and 75, three games in front of San Diego as we begin play tonight. First pitch of the game, a fastball sails outside. Fowler, with 12 home runs this year, four of them against the Padres. Clips that one foul and he's hitting 442 this year against San Diego pitching. Last time we saw him, he was hitting right around 300. He's fallen on some tough times. His average has dipped to 260. Two balls and a strike. But a few, Mark Grant or you, Tony, could have gone to Burt Smith before the game. Tonight and giving him one little piece of advice as he goes for his first big league win. What would it have been? Try to hit the glove. Tony. Look at throw your fastball first strike. Yeah. And and not overthrow. Yeah. I, I think that'd be another little nugget I would give to him. I'm sure Bud Black, the manager for the Padres, and Darren Balsey have covered all those bases. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds so simple. Three and one and a line drive to right that chases Venable back and he can't get to it. Rattles off the wall and Fowler is into second with a leadoff double. Venable retreated on the ball as if he had a beat on it, and then at the last minute, his leap didn't get him there. Well, it's hit pretty good here by Fowler. Three and one. He's ahead, ahead in the count, looking for a fastball, gets it. Really unable to run that one down. Just out of his reach. It would have been nice to get a, a first out there, eliminate the speed on the basis of Dexter Fowler. That's his 18th double bagger. Kind of struggling against righties, 233. But he got, he worked the count, fastball count, and he got it. Brings up DJ LeMayhew, fouls it back. I don't know, is there another player in the big leagues with a surname that has five vowels? <laughs> How much does it cost for a consonant <laughs> these days? <laughs> EA. I E U. Five. They only gave me a couple. They only gave Mark yeah. one. Yeah. And Tony sometimes why? That's right. One and one. Lemayu a good average, 282. He's uh, one of five different Rockies. In double figures and stolen bases, they're doing a lot of running under Walt Weiss. They do a lot of that. They try to create action on the bases. Up the middle and squirts to deep to second and thrown behind the runner as Jerko is able to keep the ball. Wouldn't hit very hard out of center field, so the runner Fowler can only advance to third on the infield hit. LeMahieu. Well, once that ball leaves a pitcher's hand, you cannot control what happens after that. Broken bat, and you're thinking, okay, not hit hard, but right over second base. Sedanio can't get in. Once again, a heads up baseball instinct play. Turco yep. knows there's no way they're going to get LeMahieu. Yep. In case uh, Fowler gets a little froggy. Look to the back of the door yep. side. That's really all you can do. And again, we talked about it already here in the, with the first two hitters. You know, 3 1, he had to come in with the fastball, yep. gets hit hard. There, he makes a good pitch, breaks a bat. Goes where you you know kind of can't control it, and he ends up getting a base hit. And so you hear here's where you really have to settle down and try to make a pitch. Brings up to Lewitsky, and a fastball for a strike. To Lewitsky missing some 35 games during the course of the season, and still with 22 homers, 71 runs batted in, and with runners in scoring position there. Are his numbers this year solid 46 runs batted in change up in the dirt I'll have to keep an eye on that pitch the secondary pitch I like that pitch being the secondary pitch looks like a fastball 
Same arm angle. The key is throwing it for a good strike early in the count. So you can expand and maybe bounce it like that one with two strikes. Enfield back. They'll trade a run for a double play. And he drills one to deep center field. Amarista still going back, and that ball's off the wall. One run scores, quick relay, and Jerko is able to hold the runner LeMahieu with third as the Rockies, true to form, the top hitting team in the National League. The first three men up against first. Smith delivered double single double one nothing. It's a hang breaking ball yep. hanging curveball Tony right in the middle of the plate. You don't want to hang a bitch in the middle of the plate to a guy like Tula whiskey because that's what he's going to do. With. Second and third still no one out Fowler has checked in with the first run of the game. And here's the. National League's leading hitter Michael Kadire with a 331 average. That's one point above Chris Johnson of Atlanta at 330. Talk about pitch selection from Bruce Smith. I mentioned earlier, bully with the fastball. Yeah, 73% of the time. And that's quite a difference. Change up just under 20. And we saw the curveball. Just off the bat of Tulowitzki, that was over the heart of the plate. He's got to make an adjustment with that one. One ball and one strike to Kadair. No, like he got the strike call from Dale Scott on that pitch. 0 1 2. So this is where Burt Smith needs to be. Four seam fastball away, right on the outside corner. Although he missed with location because Nick was set up inside. Sorry, that was a good slot. Good slot for the fastball there. You know, if they, if you're the hitter's going to be aggressive on that fastball. It's usually a ball he's going to roll over on. But as you saw right there, Kadir came back with the fastball, tried to go the other way with it. And that's why he's hitting 331. <laughs> exactly right. And he tries to go to right field again, curveball, but he left it in a pretty good spot for Kadir. So a couple of curveball I've seen, guys, right? A hanger to Tulowitzki off the wall. That one Kadir couldn't keep fair. Tried to go to right field. One thing's for sure, this Rocky team, they love to hit the fastball. And they'll crush a breaking ball. Mistake as well. Yeah, you leave it in the middle of the plate. It's like keeping the ball down is going to be important. Another foul. That'll be a out of blanks range back of the Padre dugout. That was a nice pitch on the inside part of the plate, tying up Kadir. Career year for the man who Played most of his professional career in the Minnesota Twins organization. Broke in with Minnesota in 2001. Ground ball sharply to short. They're going to go to third and get the out there as the run scores. As Cedeno takes uh, Tulowitzki out of the play, but LeMahieu scores. And it's 2 nothing Colorado. Give Kadir his 75th RBI. Well, he sharply hit ball and on contact there, LeMahieu scoring. I thought he was going to go to the plate initially, Sedania. I thought at first as well. It's kind of surprised Lema um, to the whiskey gave himself up so I know, easily. I Maybe slide for what the heck I'm yeah. out. <laughs> Not trying to hurt myself sliding. He was surprised that the throw was there. Yeah, a lot of times they just go ahead and go to first on that, but you know, he already got one run in and a chance for a good chance for a second run to score there. Now you're double play ball from getting yourself out of the inning. See Walt Weiss is still wondering why two whiskey was going to third on the ground ball short right there. Rosario's numbers 21 home runs on the year. And as we mentioned, four of those against Padre pitching. Hey, one of the Blake Street Bombers back in the day with the big cat, Iris Galarraga, Dante Bichette, Vinny Castilla, Larry Walker. That was quite a uh, combination they had. Yeah. 
Any one of those guys in the middle of that lineup then. The guys like Walt Weiss setting the table for those guys. Oh, that's right, yeah. Mike Lansing. Mike Was any on those, Lansing, those teams? yes. You know, Eric Young. Yep. The other guy. That'll be out of play. Rockies with the early lead in this first inning. A couple of runs. Fowler double. The Mayhew infield hit. Tulowitzki doubled in one. And the second run scores on Kavalier's fielder's choice. Kavalier at first base with one out. The Rockies right from the opening series way back in April have been tough on the Padres. 12 and 4 on the season. Another fastball. Okay, let me ask you guys. You run the Colorado Rockies. You're the general manager. Do you beef on, on pitching or do you just load up on boppers? Tony? <laughs> I'm loading up on pitching because I think you can't win a World Series just swinging a bat. Good I, pitchers, I, I shut totally down agree. good hitters. And, and you, know, I, you still have to you still have to come up with some pitching. And I, I look for guys that throw hard with Sinker natural slider, sinkers. Yeah. 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 Keeping the ball down they, in Colorado. They tried that before. Because I also think you don't have to be a bopper to be successful at that ball no, yard. You'll you still be able to produce some runs. Yes. Yes. I agree. But it's also how they do on the road as well. It's probably more so how they do on the road. That's where pitching really helps you on the road. Swing and a miss. And Smith has his first strikeout. And speaking of their road play. They're 25 and 44 on the road this year. Hey, this is a nice changeup from Bert Smith. It's got the four seam rotation. We'll lean Rosario way out in front of it. Watch the arm action coming through. Looks like a fastball. It's a changeup. Looks like a pump. Feels like a sneaker. Todd Hilton. As you pointed out in your interview, he was drafted in the first round by the Padres. He told me that the main reason why he went to Tennessee was his parents were going through a divorce. He wanted to stay close to home, or he might well have had this great career in a San Diego uniform. And it's obvious his great admiration for you, Tony. And uh, I found that fascinating that he goes back to day one and Find the ball early. <laughs> Get that. And see where that ball is. And you, did you uh, look at the helmet first or the hat of the pitcher? Yeah, and then pick I, up? I, yeah I just kind of came up with that on my own. I hated looking all around, so I just kind of focused on the logo of the pitcher's hat. And then I didn't have far to go to the release point. And again, I, I'm amazed. Even I'm, I'm 53 now, and I'm amazed at how many kids can, you know, players today can come back and. Tell me something that I said at some point in my career. Well, yeah, he says he had a look on the cap. It doesn't surprise me because so many people have talked to you and they're going to take your advice and run with it. And just what you've meant to obviously not the city of San Diego, but the, the game of baseball itself. So people, I mean, you're quite an influence on people. Well, you know, you, I, I mean, this, I've been saying the same thing since I've been playing. I've done, you know, thousands of camps and clinics. You know, gone to you know summer conventions to talk about the art of hitting, and sometimes it's the simplest of things that stick. Sometimes the most complicated part is like when we were down talking with to Todd today, is that he's always had the ability to use the whole field, and he's taken advantage of that regardless of if he's going well or not. He kind of sticks to the game plan, and when you do that, that's usually when you kind of figure out who you are and. How much success you're going to have, and it's amazing to me how how many players that play the game, some 400 offensive guys, oh, it's more than that, get opportunity to go up to the plate and swing the bat. Don't use that practice of trying to use the whole field. It's just amazing to me. Bosley out to talk with Bert Smith after the four pitch walk to Helton. So first and second two outs, and Josh Rutledge the batter. Hitting with some power, seven home runs in just 71 games. I 
it's uh, six in a row out of the strike zone from Smith. Trying to get out of this first inning with just two on the board. Seven in a row. You know, Tony, you mentioned something to me earlier when we looked at Bert Smith prior to going on the air. You said, "Hey, he's kind of short arm." Yeah. I said, "Yeah, with that arm action of his, and that's not a good sign going to the phone this early." Um, and, and with that short arm action and the drop and drive delivery, sometimes you can work underneath the mm -hmm. baseball, and that messes up the release. Point. That's what it looks like to me, especially on the breaking balls that he's thrown today. He's kind of gotten underneath them, and consequently, they've hung in the middle of the zone. You know, that last fastball you got on top of that one. And it's a fine line. It, it is. Three balls and a strike. Two on, two out. Two in. That's in there. Well, hopefully he gets out of this inning with just two runs. The next thing you know, possibly seven innings because. He's got to be economical if he goes out there for another inning. Next pitch, 32. Swing and a miss, strike three. So he strikes out a couple in this first inning. But the Rockies score two on three hits and they lead two. Padres coming up. Venables to lead it off. Down by two. San Diego brought to you by your San Diego County Lexus dealer inviting you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today by Petco where the healthy pets go by Farmers Insurance contact your local agent at 888-96 Farmers and by the Experience Buick lease it's a new lease on luxury and the gas lamp district on this Friday night will be buzzing after this ball game is over. Fans pour out into all the great restaurants in the local area as we check on the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota tonight. Here's how Bud Black's men will hit. Venable will start things with Chris Denorfia, then Jed Jerko, Chase Headley, Bats cleanup, Kyle Blanks, Alexi Amarista, Ronnie Cedeno, then Nick Hundley, eighth, and Bert Smith against Juan Nicasio, 26 year old right hander from the Dominican Republic who is eight and seven on the year. First pitch is outside ball one. He's 2 0 oh lifetime against the Padres, has one win this year. Better pitcher at home than he is on the road. At least statistically, on the road this year, he's 4 and 5 with a 5 4 3 RA mark. And the scouting report hot fastball 93 94. His slider is probably his best pitch, and he tries to be aggressive in the zone, although some numbers in the minor leagues, and he's had some injuries as well. Uh, has a chance to be a little erratic at times, so patience is going to be a key tonight for the Padre hitters. That ball hit well to right field. That chases Kadir back, and that ball's gone. 
A long laser just over the right field wall into the jack deck, and Venable touches them all. Number 21 for Will Venable. Well, the ball carried mightily in the day game on Wednesday, and it appears this hot weather has sh shrunken Petco Park. I think that was a change of it looked coming out of the hand like a fastball, but he took a if it was a fastball, he took a little bit off of that and Will Venable was right on. You know, I, I don't think I've seen a ball hit that well on the line that got out in such a hurry yeah. to right field. You know, we've seen him to left field. But that ball had that sound, and as soon as you saw Kadir kind of turn his back, <laughs> aim a number. He knew he had a yeah. chance, yeah. That was a laser. You don't see many of those here in this ballpark. No Fowler's ball in the first inning. He uh, there's a ground ball fair past the dive of third baseman LeMahieu, and Kristen North is on his way to second. He's going to try for three. Here comes the throw in the third. He's in there. Well, you can see a triple possibly happening there. When you get too close to that fence as it's coming around. Another changeup right there. The North hits this ball right down the line. Blackman gets too close to this ball in third and in, in the corner. The Norfia makes up his mind he's going to go for three. Gets there pretty easily. The Hard and Hustle Award winner does just that. He hustles his way into a triple, and the Padres, with no one out, have a chance to tie it up. Jed Jerko. Infield back. They'll give up the tying run for an out. Ball one. Fastball. So a line shot home run by Venable. A kangaroo triple down the third baseline into the left field corner from Denorfia. As the Padres answer the attack by the Rockies against Burt Smith in the top of the first. It looks like Rosario and Dale Scott, the home plate umpire, are having a nice discussion about that last fastball to Jerko. He won the on the inner half of the plate and it was on the outer half. I thought it was a pretty good pitch. I thought it was too. And he didn't get it with the way he was set up and the he way he set received up it. in and the way he went to catch it. Correct. And look Tony you're absolutely right Fox tracks by Southland technology pitch number one in the strike zone. Second pitch could have been called. Yeah. Cool. Two and one now as Jerko swings and misses. By the way Venables home run is the eighth time that he's led off. With a home run. Number twenty one on the season. By far a career year for Wilt Venable. That'll be out of play deep down the right field line. Well, eight home runs hit on the Wednesday game with San Francisco, six by the Giants, most ever by a visiting team at Petco as the ball was flying in the hot, dry weather. Looks as if we might see some home runs this weekend as well. Swing and a miss. Jerko goes down swinging for the first out. And that gives us a chance to introduce the Rockies defense brought to you by Hyundai. In the outfield, left to right, it's Blackman, Fowler, and Kadire. LeMayhew, Tulowitzki, Rutledge, and Helton are on the horn. Rosario behind the plate for Nicasio. Todd Helton now with 2,500 base hits and counting. Joining some elite company. Yeah, that's a heck of a career. It's been fun to watch. Chase Headley, six for nine in his career against Nicasio with a couple of home runs. Even a fly ball would do the job here to tie up the game. And he falls behind two strikes. Ninth home run of the season on Wednesday. That snapped a string of 99 at bats without a homer. Strike three. Three straight pitches. Headley never got his bat off the, his shoulder. So it looked mighty bright when Denorfia followed Venable's uh, home run with a triple, but he's still there at third with two out. Boy, pretty good pitches, and I think these are legitimate strikes when you take a look at it. Right on the outside corner, very surprised that Chase Headley didn't take a hack at it. 
Definitely high enough. Yep. Mid thigh high. So they won't tie it on and out. It's up to Kyle Blanks. Jerko and Headley striking out with Denorfia third. Ball one. Blanks has had good success against the Rockies. This year he's uh, hitting 375 against Rocky pitching with a couple of home runs. Outside again. There are his season numbers eight homers and 34 runs batted in. Number 35 sitting there at third for him in the form of Chris Denorfia. Fouled into the glove. There's that slider. He hadn't given in when he's been behind the count 2 0. Casio wearing a infielder's number 12. I don't see many pitchers carrying those numerals. Threw that one right by him. 94. So a pitch away from striking out the side after giving up a home run and a triple. Full. Next pitch will be the 20th from Nicasio. Just looking ahead in the game, marking the pitches by Nicasio. When he goes six innings, he's a totally different pitcher than uh, when he doesn't. He's 11 and 2 when he goes six innings, less than six. He's 3 and 12. Just stays alive. And sometimes it can be, you know, this, uh, this pitch right here. What he does with blanks right here could determine what, which kind of outing it's going to be. Well, he's shown confidence in that slider behind the count 2 0 for a strike. 3 2. Might break it out here. And Marista would be next. Burt Smith getting one of those runs back. It's now 2 1. That, that slider is a good pitch, too. Yes, no. This here, three two. Most hitters are trying to shorten their stroke up a little bit, so they're probably going to get a better look at it. And another foul ball. Another fastball. I see Rosario. Boy, he is getting into the ear. Part cheerleader, part pitching coach, Rosario. After that pitch, you see where he was set up yep. down and away? Yep. That ball was down the middle of the plate, knee high, and Rosario was like, let's go. That's what you have to do. Come as on a catcher. now. Yeah, that's your responsibility. Boy, he is into it. He gets that ball where you want it. Fly ball to right. Kadir coasts in under it. And the inning comes to an end. Padres get a leadoff home run from Will Vanderbilt, his 21st of the season. And after one at Petco, Rockies two, Padres one.
you see Birch Smith there getting a little pep talk from pitching coach Darren Balsley. And one of the things Birch told me earlier that Balsley was really keying in on, he said, was his pitch selection. And he said, of course, throwing my fastball for strikes and my off-speed pitches, same deal. He goes, I got to locate those pitches. And I think that's something that, of course, Nick Hunley can work with him as well. But, Tony, I think you'll really appreciate this. One of the things Birch said he really noticed the biggest difference with between pitching in the minors and now coming up to the majors is he said hitters are a lot more patient. He goes, I can't make mistakes like I do in the minors because they will tee off on it. And, of course, we saw a couple of those, the hanging breaking ball to Tolowitzki earlier there in the first inning. But I found that interesting. You know, a lot of times they have to learn the hard way. And that is you, know, you have to locate. And if you don't locate at this level, good hitters make you pay. And the harder you throw it, the better they like it. Yeah. Flattens out. Yeah. If there's no movement to it, you get to 105 and guys are still find a way to square it up. That'll be fouled out of play. It's uh, going back to the simplicity of the game. As uh, you see this pitch hanging in the middle of the plate for Tulowitzki, who drives the double to center field to knock in a run. The pitchers have to locate, and batters have to swing at strikes. Right. Pretty simple game, isn't it? When, it can, when you break it down, <laughs> when you break it down to the simplest form, that's that's it. Pitchers have to throw strikes. They have to throw the ball in the plate. Change up peck foul. And if I were Burt Smith tonight, Nick Hundley behind the plate, he knows the game plan. I mean, they go over the scouting reports in their meetings with pitchers and catchers, and Darren Balsley sits down with the starting pitcher. And believe me, Nick Hundley sticks with the game plan. He knows the game plan. I wouldn't see him shaking off at all tonight. Watch out. A long drive. And a fan brought a glove and made a good play. Nice going there. You saved the people around you yeah. with that catch. That young girl in front of him, that was aimed right at her. He reached right over and snared it. <laughs> Take a picture of that face. <laughs> two and two now to Charlie Blackman, former so, star at Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets. And if I were Burt Smith, I'm taking all the thinking out of the game, looking at fingers. And throw into the glove. Yep. Whatever Dick Conley puts down, I'm going to throw it. Brown ball to first. Blanks will flip it to Smith for the out. Oh, what's wrong with that? Until you get a feel for what's going on up here. Not, there's nothing wrong with letting Dick Conley call the game. Right. You work with Nick until you get a feel for what you think you could do. Now, obviously, there's situations where you might want to throw a different pitch or you know come at him a different way. But you know you got the ball in him. You, you have the ultimate decision. But you might as well go with somebody who's been behind the plate a little while, kind of understands how it works. Pitcher Juan Nicasio, five hits this season, five for 31. He's knocked in three. Ninety-two on that strike. Boy, he really does drop his elbow a lot. Kind of almost, underneath. Yeah. Almost looks like he pushes the ball a little bit. And another fastball strike. And from a hitter standpoint, when you see a guy get underneath the ball like that, you know usually it's not going to have much movement. Uh, the jitsy's going to be and it's straight be up, probably too. Yeah. Three fastballs, strike three. Ignacio caught looking. Three strikeouts for. Bert Smith is a strikeout pitcher based on his minor league numbers. Oh, even though it's the pitcher, four seam fastball, uno dos, adios. Senior Headley was set up there. He's sitting up away. almost off the plate away. And it leaked over the heart of the leaked, plate. Leaked over the heart of the plate. Now it gets a good hitter when that happens. Kabaya. He usually, <laughs> usually gets it pretty hard. Yeah. Fowler lined a double over Will Vendable's head in right field the first time. And scored one of the two runs in that first inning. And 
Another shot to right. Venable is there, and that ball sinks on him. A line drive out. One, two, three. The Rocky score in the second. It'll be Amarista, Cedeno, and Nick Hundley coming up. Bottom of the second. Charger fans, it's time to bolt up. It's that time each week. Join our own Laura McKeeman as she talks with Coach Mike McCoy and the team about the road ahead from the front office to down on the field. Chargers Insider, Thursday at 3.30 and 10, right here on Fox Sports San Diego. And, of course, uh, Laura will be following up on the very first game of the season on Monday night as they host the Houston Texans. We had... Uh, Dwight Freeney, one of the all-time great pass rushers, uh, threw out the first pitch before the game tonight. Yep. And he went up and tackled Clayton <laughs> Richard and uh, a former quarterback, Richard uh, Freeney, must have been salivating yep. just looking at him. Well, we wish the Chargers a whole lot of luck with their season getting ready yep. to start. And Marista opening up the second inning as uh, here is uh, Freeney's form, former star at Syracuse. Hey, not bad. See, in a baseball jersey, he doesn't look that big. About 6'5 and 235, 240. He's not a, you know, he's probably quick. Very well, quick. Quick on quick. Defensive yeah. end at 230, 240. Yep. Calling him an okay. outside linebacker. Yeah, now he's a linebacker. Filed by Amarista, 2-2. Two two. Well, we wish you luck. Hope the Chargers have a great year. That perpetuates itself. The Aztecs do well, the Chargers do well, the Padres do well. It just feeds on itself. Two and two. Up and in. And uh, speaking of winners, tomorrow night, folks, we hope you'll be here. A 5 40 game will be on at 5 o'clock. The East Lake All Stars, the United States Little League champions, are going to be here. Chance to salute them. They're going to take batting practice. It'll be a big night. Left field and it's falling in a hurry, but Blackman able to run it down for the out. One away to Ronnie Cedeno. They've done a couple of hits with the little leaguers already since they've been oh, back in you? town. It's been what a great bunch. What an experience for yeah. them, huh? It, it, it really was. We made our city and county proud. And also, uh, they're giving away that luchador mask, that Padres luchador mask. But uh, Mark Grant has been just uh, <laughs> so excited all season long, waiting for the date to come. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who's excited more than me. Who's that? Eddie Ortega. Eduardo Ortega and Juan Avila. <laughs> the broadcast there's, is there. <laughs> oh, there's Carlos Hernandez on the left, and then Eddie. Look, he's got his mask right next to does him. Does he? Up there. Look at yeah, on his computer. Yeah. 
right there. A luchador. Cuidado, kid. Hola, Marcos. How are you feeling? <laughs> love it every time, right, Tony? It's great. I love Eddie. <sighs> Marcos. Como esta? How are you feeling? <laughs> one and one. So Daniel takes outside and did not go. So Homer done that long ball fest on Wednesday afternoon, his second home run, but uh, that would have been out uh, under any conditions, well back into the second deck in left field. Two and two. You know what else I know this guy's about, uh, Rosario? Uh, you talk about he gets that ball back quickly to Nicasio, and he gets right back down in that crouch. He did it that last pitch there. It seems like he just wants his pitcher to get in a rhythm. And I always like this as well. A catcher who fired the ball back. A little bit of fuzz on it. Yeah. Not this lollipop stuff, you know. Give it get get it to me. Look, when you catch 82 games at Coors Field, and you know how wild those games could be. <laughs> I bet you get in the habit of firing that ball back. Another foul. You saw Rosario there shaking his head. He wanted his pitcher to shake him off and just to give the hitter something more to think about. Nice grab there, sir. He's even got a receptacle to keep all the baseballs he's going to catch. And another foul. Let's go back and uh, the senior league representative there making the catch. Uh, rock and fire. You know, charge those line drives. <laughs> That's great. Swing and a miss, and Cedeno is the third strikeout victim of Juan Nicasio. Well, Nick Hundley steps up. He's had some success against Nicasio in Colorado earlier this year. Touched them all. But Nicasio and the Rockies would prevail and won that game. 2 1, Colorado leading here in the home half of the second. Base is empty. For Hundley and two out. Ground ball to the third baseman, LeMayhew, across to Helton, a little high, but Helton, with all his experience, able to change his footwork and complete the 5 3 put out, and we've completed two. The top of the third inning, and it's time now for the Saquon Casino Daycation stat of the game. The Padres, the last four games, Padre pitching has struck out at least 10. That equals the best ever 
in franchise history. So Bert Smith and company tried to make it five straight games and Smith off to a good start has three strikeouts through two innings. Well you can't get a strikeout unless you get strike one right. But that might sound a little funny but it's true because. You get the two strikes it tells me that some of these pitchers that. Rack up those strikes. they got the wipeout pitch right they put the hitter on the defensive. Then they put him away with the punch out. How quick you get strike two quick you can strike, get to strike three. That's right. So. Yes, Monty Grantal. He's been working out, even though uh, he can't do a lot of heavy lifting or running with that uh, knee surgery after that accident in Washington at home plate. But uh, he told me he's very confident he's going to be ready starting next season. Although at the time of the operation, uh, all the reports were it'd be at least mid-year before he could play again. But that just might be an athlete's natural optimism. Yeah. Let's hope he's right. I hope he's right. Yeah. DJ LeMayhew infield hit up the middle the first time and scored one of the two runs in the first inning. Good fastball down in the zone. Now, oh, two, you got a whole bunch of different ways you can go. Up the ladder, at the feet, at the belt buckle. You name them, Wood. So this gets down to what we talked about throwing quality strikes. Lines that went down the right field line and a fair ball into the corner. Venable digging it up. And LeMahieu has a stand up double to start things here in the third. Not only do you have to learn how to throw quality strikes, you have to learn how to throw quality balls as well. And that's the perfect example. 0 and 2. It was a breaking ball, but just catches too much on the plate. This is where you have to trust your catcher, Hundley, and get it down. Look at the little hump in that. On contact, upper thigh high, away. He's protecting. He takes the ball that way. That's when he has to bounce because LeMahieu is on the defensive there. Here's the other thing, like we talked about two strikes, you're more apt to slow your stroke down, shorten it up. And the bad thing about that breaking ball, not only did it hang, but he tipped it. He tipped it before he threw it. And that, when you change your motion or slow your motion down, hitters are going to pick up on that in a hurry. How did he tip it? Because he slowed his delivery down. And, and you know, Tony, you're right, because it's not only his arm axe, but his delivery it's, as a whole. It's got to be It's got to be out of that same window every time. And that one, he slowed it down and gave LeMahieu a good, right. easy look at yeah. it. What was that first pitch called a ball? That's right in the middle of the plate. You can't throw a much better strike. And there's a strike one and one. And there's a strike that's a ball. <laughs> My goodness. Well, it make up call perhaps. Tulowitzki double to center field. Knocked in his 72nd run of the season. The middle of the lineup. He's got 72. Kadire now with 75. Rosario 74. Three men in the 70s. The Padre leader is. Will Venable with 51. Yeah, too risky. We're talking about a guy that's missed 30 some odd games too. Mm -hmm. so. He's always been a protective player. Gonzalez is out of the lineup. He has 70, so that's four men in the lineup with 70 runs batted in or more. Two and one in the dirt. Change it. Well, living dangerously here to Troy Tulowitzki. Three fastballs, a changeup to go to three and one. I was thinking we're going to throw a fastball. It's not going to be in. It's going to be out over the plate. All over the map, too. Changeup. Had him out in front. Good pitch. Watch the arm angle. Watch the arm delivery on this changeup as compared to the one he threw the May. He got it right out there, out front. Good release point. Stayed on top of it and then turned it over. And that pitch right there put the thought into Whiskey's head that you know, maybe he won't come back with a fastball. Maybe he'll throw a changeup. Full count to Troy Tulowitzki. Kadire on deck. Lead off double. Lemayhew there in second. And ball four. Second walk given up by Smith. 
Oh, the runner on second base and nobody out. Let's go back to the first pitch. Birch Smith versus uh, Tulowitzki. Ball one. Why? Well, it was. Fastball evens it up at one to one. Another fastball trying to locate it. That wasn't actually a bad pitch, but Nick wanted it inside. There's the changeup. Showing some confidence coming back after bouncing one. And then once again, off of the fastball. Bert Smith all over the map with that heater tonight. The Fox track showing that the six pitches, four were strikes. Dale yep. Scott, a tough pitcher's umpire so far. Chopped to short, not hit very hard, so Kadire has to go across to get Kadire 6 3 and the runners advance. I'm surprised today you didn't go to second base. The ball wasn't hit that hard. So LeMayu moves to third, Tulowitzki to second. With one on, and Willian Rosario the batter. Rosario struck out the first time. Two one, the Rockies lead here in the third. Infield. We play back, except for Blanks about bag high at first. He would come to the plate. Twenty one home runs leading all major league catchers. And seventy four runs batted in the second there. Tim Stauffer begins throwing in the Padre bullpen. Pretty good numbers all the way around for Rosario, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Two ninety two average. Twenty four hits. You, know, you figured he would be a guy capable of hitting twenty home runs. He may be a 30 home and, run hitter. And possibly in the future could be. So 56 pitches already for Bert Smith, and he has only one out here in the third. So Stauffer getting ready in case. Up. 0 and 2. This would be a big strikeout if Burt Smith can come up with the goods. Took care of Rosario the first time. Mayhew to Lewitsky in scoring position and swung on and missed strike three. Number four for Smith. Nice job there by Smith. Remember earlier I said watch Nick Cumley's fingers and watch the glove. Before that pitch, guys, Nick Cumley did just that. He positioned his glove up out of the zone. Bert Smith, nice job following directions, hence the strikeout. Now to get rid of Todd Helton. And you said he'd be more apt to throw that fastball up when yep. he got underneath it like he did. Elton walked on four pitches his first time. Here's uh, Nick Hundley. We talked about him motioning with his glove. He gave the sign. He wanted it up. Almost got out of the crouch a little bit. Good stri big strikeout. Ooh. So Daniel was breaking towards second base and uh, Birch Smith came to the plate. The left side was wide open. Most seasons with the same team active. 19 years for Jeter, Mariano Rivera and Helton 17 consecutive seasons with the Rockies. There's three examples of guys that wow. played on one team. Everybody talks about that doesn't happen anymore. Well, good pitch. We out in front of the 2 0 changeup. Oh, this changeup seems like Bert Smith getting the feel for it, throwing it behind in the count. The thing I like about his changeup, guys, is that it's got the same four seam action. He doesn't hold it differently. Some guys don't hold the two seam. No, he holds his four seam fastball going that way, and then also the changeup as well. So, as a hitter, sees the same speed, or the same spin, rather, out of the hand. Well, that's why I was talking about the double that LeMahieu hit, because. You throw that same kind of like four seam change up that doesn't have a movement. Right. 
and you let the hitter know by slowing down your delivery that that's what's coming. That's the easiest one to vax man and do some serious damage. But. Two and two, and here's where Helton now with two strikes on him, a dangerous opposite field hitter. Yep. Second and third, two out. The Rockies, fastball away. Oh, breaking ball! Pulls it to the right side, and Jerko throws him out. Good work by Smith. Pitches on a second and third with one out. in the top of the third and it is time now for our AT&T Twitter poll question tonight and this is going to be a tough one because we want to hear from you as to who you think is the best shortstop in the majors right now and there are your choices just of course chime in on Twitter using the hashtag if you think it's Troy Tulowitzki who we're seeing tonight in the sixth spot hashtag Tulo and SS or if it's Ian Desmond in your opinion hashtag Desmond SS Use the hashtag with the last name and SS, and we will, of course, check those results later in the show. But, guys, what's your opinion when you take a look at those four faces and four dynamic talents, really? Well, I look at um, age comes into play. Yep. Tulo is one heck of a shortstop. Don't get me wrong. Um, I like Andrelton Simmons. We've seen uh, Gene Segura. Uh, he, he's a... Uh, Close to being the complete package. Yeah. Still got a lot of things to learn yeah. still. No contest. Two to Witzke. Yeah. He's the best shortstop I mean, in the majors. No contest? No. Really? Two to Witzke. I mean, he's perennial all star. He drives in runs. He fields his position. He's done it over the years. It hasn't been one or two years. He's. Yeah. Still got to stay healthy, though. That's the, the one bugaboo with him. This is the right dick. He's had years where he's at 30 homes, driven in 100. Does he have the same range, you think, as he? As I think he does. I think he does. He's not a small guy. He's a big shortstop. No, he's big. Yeah, 6'3". Just like Ramirez Maybe in that way, he's a big shortstop. Chopper by Bert Smith foul. And, you know, he's just 29 years of age. It's not like he's uh, tripping over his gray beard either. Well, see, that's the thing that concerns me, though. Only 29 in the injuries. And playing in an offensive park, too. Yeah. You really shouldn't be surprised. And I think he's good on the road as well as at home. But, you know, some guys' numbers have been, you know, inflated a little bit playing in, in Denver. Good. Swing on the ball by Bird Smith in his second major league at bat, and he's thrown out by third baseman LeMahieu for the first out here in the bottom of the third. But a good swing on it, hitting for his first major league hit. Here's Will Venable. Homered into the jack deck his first time up. Well, 
trying to take a little extra time going up to the plate, give Bert Smith a chance to sit down. That ball jumped out of here, a low line drive. Etched out by Martin Prado for the August Player of the Month in the National League. His work in August, hitting 381 with eight home runs, uh, did not go unnoticed. The San Diego Hall of Champions named him the August Athlete of the Year. Ground ball right side, Hilton feeding Nicasio for the second out. That's eight in a row now, retired by Nicasio since the Norfia's triple. Fox College Saturday returns tomorrow. Fox Sports 1 as 13th ranked Oklahoma State, the Cowboys, battles Texas San Antonio, followed by Louisiana Lafayette taking on K State, while West Virginia battles 16th ranked Oklahoma on Fox. Then in the nightcap, Washington State looks to upset 25th ranked USC. Fox Sports is your home for college football. All season long. More teams, more football. Right here on Fox. Yeah, four games tomorrow. How yeah. about that? Just settled in and don't turn the dial. You got football for you from uh, early hours to the evening. Yep. The Norfia bounded a triple into the left field corner his first time. One and one the count on him. Casio settling into a nice. Pitching rhythm here with eight straight retired. Mm. Fastball and the North, you're going for the downs. Again, if you weren't with us at the very start, receiving the Padres Hustle and Heart Award, every team naming one player fitting that category. Right, three called. And Nicasio continues to mow him down. That is his fourth strikeout. Padres go in order in the third. On Fox Sports San Diego, brought to you by Saquon, real friendly, real close, and by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse.
three innings complete here at Petco tonight. The Rockies two runs four hits have left four. Padres a run on two hits have stranded one. They had a chance to tie it in the first after Venables home run to Norfia with a triple with no one out but Jerko and Headley struck out and blank slide out. And that's where we stand 2 1 with the lower third of the order Josh Rutledge Charlie Blackman and Juan Nicasio to bat against Bert Smith here in the top of the fourth. I think speed. I think we're going to see more of that change up. Good. I like it. Rutledge struck out his first time. So Bert Smith was uh, part of the draft class two years ago, 2011. Corey Spangenberg, Austin Hedges, the young catcher. That would be out of play. Joe Ross, who had a big win in the playoffs. For Fort Wayne and Matt Whistler, another highly regarded pitcher in the system. Those are the names you hear most often. And uh, Smith, even though he was the 443rd player picked, the 14th round, first to make it to the big leagues. Much better. Change up, good, good arm action on it. To righties and lefties alike, it doesn't matter, and that's a good sign. You have to throw that to righties. A lot of pitchers. Are reluctant. And you know what, Tony? I, I remember being told many times, oh, never throw your change up to a righty. I wish that wasn't the case. Because they think it would go down to their hitting zone and to the swing path. High fly ball to center. And Marista near the track to make the catch. Now for a long time, lefties, lefties. They didn't want to throw left handers change up. Because they thought left handers swings were down and in. Let's hit that ball pretty good. But big part of the yard. Charlie Blackman grounded to first base his first time. Dodgers, uh, interesting series in Cincinnati. And Mike Leak, local product, beat the Dodgers tonight 3 2. For the Reds, fly ball to right, routine. Venable comes up for it. Two away. Another first pitch changeup. <laughs> Bert Smith is probably looking back. Hey, you know what? Going soft a little bit. It's kind of fun. Taking the you know sting out of these uh, Colorado Rockies bats, rather than trying to throw the heater by him all day now, long. Now, do you think this is Hunley oh, leading here, or but do you think absolutely? I, I totally do think that is. But it's going to install confidence, instill confidence in, in Bert Smith. Absolutely right, Tony. Like I said, don't shake off. Just go with Hundley. Nicasio looked at three straight fastballs, striking out his first time. It's like Nuke Lelouch and Crash Davis. <laughs> don't think, B, just throw. That fastball running up and in on Nicasio. 0 1 2. Nicasio was better off when he was just taking pitches. That one almost ripped his jersey <laughs> open. Oh and my he swings goodness. and misses strike three. That's number five for Bert Smith tonight. Middle of the fourth, 2 1, Rockies.
His 23rd home run that drove in one run. And then the Rockies got another on the ground out by Kadire. As LeMahieu scored, Will Venable for the Padres led off the first with his 21st home run. Clearing the right field wall, the low line drive. And that's been it, 2 1. As we go to the home half of the fourth inning, it'll be Jerko, Headley, and Blanks against Juan Nicasio, who's retired nine straight since Denorfia's triple in the first inning. Thirty-one forty-one. A lot of hits. And still the best statue out there. We've seen them all, Tony. I like it. It's the best one. I know we, we talk about it all the time, and it never gets old. It's not often that you're pleased by your own photograph or your own if you're fortunate enough to be yeah. deserving of a statue but that artist really captured you in your swing. Speaking of swings Tony Jed Jerko what type of an adjustment does he have to take the approach right center up? right, right center. center just make it simple. You keep standing there taking looking for that one ball that you're hoping to get the pull. Meanwhile, you're going to get a bunch of balls out over the plate that you know you can go to right center with. And he's good at it. He didn't capture the hand with that palm up. See, you got to listen more than the players did when I was playing. Jerko looks at a strike, two and two. Yeah, 2 1. Not going to give in with a fastball. Throws a little slider. He's going to be a good hitter. Just, he's just got to feel his way through these little tough times. And the count full to Jerko. And that ball was right on the line. Fox track. Well, well have been punched out. Looks like Rosario maybe brought that pitch out of the zone. But you're right. Good pitch. High pop up. Shallow in center. Shortstop Tulowitzki takes charge. One away. Ten straight retired. Well, that brings up Chase Headley, who's had some home run success against Nicasio and going the opposite field at Coors Field for a couple of home runs. Okay, how do you want to throw this guy? Edley didn't get a swing his first at bat. Three, three straight strikes Straight taken. him out of three pitches last time. What's he going to do different this time? And they were all paint. I'm, I would think he would try to do the same thing, but like we just showed on the highlights, though, he has taken him deep the opposite way twice. First pitch breaking ball. For a strike. Balls and a strike now to Headley. He's pitching him way differently now. Change up there. First pitch slider. Second pitch fastball. Third pitch change up. Let's see if it's fastball away here. Oh, slider. Curveball. Slider at 82. The tilt on this one out of the hand. You can see the rotation. Boy. Good tilt. Yep. Breaker stays alive. Fastball two and two. Carol Blanks on deck. Padres trailing the Rockies here in the fourth. Two to one. Now, if I'm making a pitch here, I'm throwing a fastball off the plate because last time the balls were off the plate a little bit. And Chase knows that, right? He got called third. I'm yeah. going off the plate with a fastball. Away. Right. What'd you say? Okay. Oh, he's shaking off. Looks like he wanted to go away. And look at Rosario. It's like, <laughs> this is comical. Uh -uh, now, come on. Slider. Backdoor slider right here. 
And the count full to Headley, who has walked 53 times more than any Padre. So that's one of those. If he throws that for a strike after that one, he threw inside. Hey, tip your cap. Fastball in. Struck him out. Second time. Headley's gone out on strikes. Five strikeouts for Nicasio. Well, even though he didn't hit the glove, look at where he hit and look where he threw it. It was in, right? Ball is up, up the left. Oh, that's a ball as ball far strike. as if take, yeah. yeah. Just young hitters sitting at home remember ball strike. If you can stay in the strike zone, hitting becomes a whole lot easier. Kyle Blanks. And the reason why it's so tough up here is because pitchers are so good at starting balls in the zone. At first they look like strikes and then they run out of the zone. They end up being balls. And the ground ball to short to Lewitsky across to Helton. 12 retired in a row by Nicasio. One, Nick Hunley back behind the plate, and he had a busy morning today as he and about 10 of his teammates hosted the fourth annual Padres shopping spree there at the Target in Mission Valley. They took 90 students from the Monarch School here in San Diego to pick out, get this, two tops, two bottoms, socks and shoes, and an awesome goodie bag with extra. Such a wonderful event. And when I asked Nick earlier what made him want to get involved with this, he said it was Chris Young, a former Padres catcher, who asked him to come out and do this event about four years ago. And he took a guy around who was 13 years old, guys, and had never owned his own pair of shoes. And Nick said at that moment, I knew this was something I wanted to be involved in because it's things like that that you can just take for granted. And it made this, this kid's eyes and face light up, he said, when he handed him those shoes and said, yeah, they're yours, buddy, and he gets to do that now. He and his wife, Amy, big participants in the shopping spree every year. That's yeah, a great story, yo. Thank you, Kelly. And hats off to Huntley and all the Padres, and for that matter, almost all the major league teams. Every player has yep. a, a charity that uh, they very seriously fund, and not only with their monies, but with their time. Yeah. Tell you what, that goes a long way. Just saying hi, going to visit somebody. Uh, have you ever been to the Monarch School, Tony? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's, it's quite an experience. Dexter Fowler. One and one to count on the leadoff man who's doubled and lined to right. Bert Smith into his fifth inning. He's retired the last six Rockies. Mayhew and then to Lewitsky to follow here in the fifth. That's a good pitch right there. A 
Fowler walks more than any Rocky 64 times this year. And he's on again. Lead off walk. Well, fans, Fox Sports 1, you've heard about it, right? It's available on all TV providers. But if you want to know where it's at in your area, just go to foxsports1.com to find out what channel Fox Sports 1 is on in your area. It's easy. You want to watch that, right? Because it's the best. Check it out. 1,652 channels? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing, Dick. <laughs> You remember when I grew up, we had in Detroit, we had three channels, and then if you're lucky, you could get Windsor, Ontario for a fourth. If the wind was blowing right, right? CKLW in Windsor. <laughs> you had ABC, CBS, NBC. That was about it. Now it's uh, Tim Stauffer warming up again. Yeah, there's just so much good material, too. I mean, things like the History Channel, Discovery yeah. Channel, yep. and, you know, along with the entertainment and sports. Oh, the competition for for eyeballs is tough. Mm -hmm. So right though, it's, you know, it's made a whole lot of sports properties prosperous, a whole lot more prosperous. That's for certain. Because there's more more channel zealing to be seen. Well, Mayhew who has an infield hit and a double. He's emerging as the player that they hoped he would be. Lanky second baseman. He's 6'4. They thought he'd hit with more power. He hasn't. Two home runs this year. He's got that average going up into the mid 280s. Yeah, this Rockies team got some really good young players, Mayhew and Rutledge. Rosario, Rosario is another young player. It's going to be interesting to see what what Todd Helton decides to do at the end of the year. He decides to come back or, or retire. What do you think? Yeah, he said something to us in the meeting that I brought back flashbacks for me, and that was, you know, going on the road for, for <laughs> two weeks, <laughs> going on the road for two weeks. Yeah. And only getting two hits, that's kind of hard to live with. I, I think he's going to shut it down. I, 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 I feel like he might, too. And yeah. if he does, you know, it's going to open up a space for one of these young guys, Rutledge or LeMayhew. Franchise leaders, all-time, Tony. be tough to ever top those numbers. Todd Helton. I get more runes than me, more runs than me, more doubles. That's one of those, the lines for Tony Gwynn. Uh, let's face it, nobody's going to break that. As a Padre? No, they're they're there to be broken. You just have to play here. No, I'll time. bet you my, I'll uh, bet you the <laughs> bag of donuts I buy tomorrow, Saturday morning. Well, 30 years there's from now, they might not be worth what you pay for. There's, <laughs> there's no. No Padre is going to break those numbers that you put up. Hilton turned 40 last month. University of Tennessee, where he was a backup to a guy, Peyton Manning. Don't know what ever happened to him. <laughs> How about seven touchdown passes last night yeah. for Manning? You know, I loved Todd's honesty when I asked him about playing in the NFL. You think he could have played in the NFL? He goes, no, no way. Not fast enough, not big enough. Mayhew hanging tough. 82 pitches now for young Bert Smith. Now the Padres, a couple of their teams in the playoffs in the Midwest League. Fort Wayne won both of their first round games against Bowling Green, so they're in the best of three now against South Bend. And uh, in the Texas League, San Antonio splitting the first two games with Corpus Christi. That's the best three of five. They're home tonight, San Antonio, after uh, splitting the first two at Corpus Christi. It's part of the experience, too, Tony, even though it's the minor leagues to be in the playoffs. Yep. 
you know the fans in those towns care deeply about how they've done there they're cheering as if it is the World Series. Mm -hmm. And it's an environment that you hope guys like playing in. And as they move up the ladder that they will want to continue to play in that kind of environment. Two and two LeMahieu. Well, that's been quite an at bat for him. He's forcing Burke Smith to throw a lot of pitches. That's so the next one will be 85. This will be the ninth pitch of oh, the eighth pitch of this at bat. Fowler, good base runner, not a bad spot for a little run and hit. Yep. There he goes. Long drive to left field, but fortunately that is foul by about 15 feet. He hammered that ball. He seems to be the one guy in this lineup who's seeing the ball really good on Smith. Went up into that second tier right against the brick wall of the Western Metal Supply Company. If I was pitching right now, I'd hold and set for a long count here. See if he gets a little froggy over at first base. Swung on and missed the throw to second base. It is a no. Safe is the call. So Daniel thought he had to strike him out, throw him out. I don't know if he tagged him high. I just don't know if his foot got to the bag before the tag was put on. Good changeup by Smith. I wonder if he's a throw. He's got him. I don't know if it's. Looks like he's out. I don't know if his foot got to the bag or not. No, it's it's on the bag. Yeah. Good call. Yep. Very very close, but I think you're right, Tony. I think it was safe. Foot on the bag, then the tag. Yep. Number 19 for Fowler. Stolen base, and that sets it up for Tula Whiskey. And Fowler shaken a bit by the slide and the tag. Every time you see Fowler, that 24 and the way he's built, it's Cameron Maben's twin. Yeah. Maben, by the way, has had his wrist surgery. That was this morning. Season's over, playing only 14 games. A tough year for Cameron. Might have taken the Sedeno's knee in the shoulder. Well, you know, his left knee went into that bag pretty yeah. good, too. Focus on the left knee, the leg underneath as he goes into the